The following video is part one in a series. It's going to revolve around a few of the famous graves that are around our area. It's going to be sort of a spooky old history, a haunted old history, I guess you could say. Series for the whole month of October, with one video being uploaded per week. So please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Good morning, historians from around the internet. It's October. Fall is upon us, although I recorded this video in September. Uh, Welcome to the Old History Project. Those of you who uh, never been here before, this is a project that uh, where I try to make history of our region more known to the public. So, also before we begin, uh, I'd like to remind everybody that I do have a Patreon that you can donate to to support your favorite internet historian. So, you might recognize that home from a past video. It's the Rogers Tavern. President, several presidents have stayed here and a couple of really important generals and stuff. But that's not why we're here. Uh, although I need to give, need to ask them, the uh, Historical Society, if there's any updates on that. So it's a historical home here in Rogersville. So we're actually here at Crockett Springs Park. <coughs> And uh, let me tell you why. Because over here is where the grandparents of Davy Crockett are buried. And so before we talk about why they're buried here, uh, let's just talk about why, why it even happened. So you have to consider that the time they were uh, massacred here was... Uh, Native Americans still were still pretty populous through this area. And that's not an unknown subject. Uh, they like to settle in really close to rivers and right where we are there's several natural creeks and streams and then there's a river just a couple miles up the road here. So was the French and Indian War had just, I guess, technically ended. Uh, I guess kind of mis misquote that. And Native Americans were still very ill with a lot of the white people. A lot of the settlers that had came up here, they stole their land. They might have might have killed somebody of, of their clan. You know, we just we just don't know. We don't even know. if David the Elder Crockett done anything in particular to any of these Native Americans. They might have just been sore. So, anyway, at that time, this is a common story to say that, uh, you know, this is a common story throughout history. Because if you done something to one of the native tribes, then if they couldn't find you, they would get back somebody of your clan. And that was called clan law or blood law. And that was a very common practice here, or at least in this part of the world at that particular point in time. But just to talk about, get back on the subject to Davy, David Crockett. He was... Him and his wife had a settlement here somewhere in Rogersville. I don't quite know where. I've never been able to find any definitive source on that. But where we are, there was a stage road that came pretty close to this uh, cemetery. And in the video of uh, the Lawyer Tavern, uh, I discussed a little bit about where it was and whatnot, but they were in a pretty important area because they seen a lot of travel, both by settlers and Native Americans at this time. So Davy Crockett, 
you know, Davy Crockett, born on the mountaintop, king of the wild frontier, was named for this gentleman, David Crockett and Elizabeth Hedge. Elizabeth Hedge was his wife. And at that time, it was the Rogersville, Washington district of North Carolina when he passed away. So he was massacred by a dragging canoe. Now, David and his wife, Elizabeth, left the settled lands of North Carolina and crossed the mountains into present-day East Tennessee in search of rest territory to settle. While his older sons were away with the Revolutionary Army at Kings Mountain in 1777, the grandfather, David, and his wife were two of a dozen or so settlers living near present-day Rogersville who were massacred by Creek and Cherokee Native Americans. Now, David Crockett was one of the founders of Tennessee and signed the petition of the inhabitants of the Washington District, or the Watauga Petition, which was delivered sometime between 1775 and 1776. And so this is just to discuss and show you guys where their grave is, because you're right here in the middle of town and you don't really know that this is here. This is really significant, you know, because Davy Crockett was born over in Limestone, but most of these most of these areas was his stomping grounds, you know. He came up through here just about everywhere. I think his parents ran a tavern in Morristown somewhere, but that tavern's not really original. It was constructed from the Panther Springs Hotel. But anyway, uh, this month in October, I'm gonna be going around to a few, uh, a few significant graves. I'm gonna try to go around to four and uh, showcase one, one per weekend, you know, of someone significant, kind of like a creepy old history. So, this is another one. This is Joseph Rogers. This is a namesake of Rogersville. And here's Mary Rogers. as a daughter of Thomas Amy. Well, anyway, uh, I figured this would be a really neat video for some people, you know. Maybe you research what's going on in your town. But to go back to this event, back in the early days, um, and we used the, I don't know, the massacre of Fort Sabert, for instance. And I covered a video on this at some at an earlier point. Uh, Fort Sabert was pretty much by itself, uh, and there was. A group of Native Americans that went in there and raided that place and one of my ancestors was part of it his name was Johan and Nicholas Saber and Nicholas Saber was his son anyway long story short uh, lots of people were massacred there and when the Native Americans took up the line of march they took them to a nearby hill and placed them on one or two logs and on one log was people that got massacred instantly at you know whenever they said so and on the other log was people that were taken captive and uh that just you know something to th to think on of what our ancestors had to deal with you know but it was it's really hard to pinpoint whose fault it was you know exactly because we don't know what the people of Fort Sabert done to incite such an attack. It could have been a retaliation for something that happened years earlier. Somebody in the in the fort could have done something particular to one of the uh, one of the Native American families there. We we just don't know. And it's it's the same way with this. We don't know if this was just an outright massacre, if this was part of the clan law or blood law. It's just a thing. But nonetheless this is a significant little marker here, hidden right here in downtown Rogersville. And you probably never even knew it was here. And so we'll conclude this video with just a message to come back and see what we've got going on next week. One of the videos that I wanted to record was one of Nanya He, or Nancy Ward, the beloved woman of the Cherokee. Now I won't, I won't spoil that one, but just tune in, you know, and I just want to remind everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, an honor to make 
these videos for everybody because I know that some of this stuff isn't taught in schools anymore. And uh, what I want to try to do is make a place where people can come and learn real history that's not been watered down. You know, even when I was in school, some of the stuff had been watered down to such a point that it really wasn't interesting. Now I understand that there are some details that need to be excluded for you know obvious reasons. And, you know, kids don't need to learn about stuff, certain stuff like that. But certain stuff just doesn't need to be watered down, and certain other stuff needs to be taught. So, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and leave a like, share, and subscribe, and tell your friends about old history. Because I feel that this mission is important. Thanks for watching.